Hey there, today we're diving into Builder Trend's new job costing budget. We're gonna make sure that we can track our costs on a construction project to our budgets. We're gonna dive into their new user interface and show you how it's a really great tool to manage your costs and make sure that your customers know what their price is. Now, a few precursors to this here. We're going to assume that you have your cost codes established. We're also going to assume that you have a connection to QuickBooks set up. And lastly, we're going to assume that you have an estimate within Builder Trend. Okay, so if you don't have those three things, I have some videos out there. Uh, we have links in the description to make sure you get to that point. That's where we're going to be taking this conversation. And even if your estimate is not made within Builder Trend, we still want it to at least get to Builder Trend. So if you're using Excel, Google Sheets, something like that, to make your estimate, whenever it's at its final point, we want to import it into Builder Trend so that we can do some costing against it. So here we go, we're in Builder Trend. I got Builder Trend on my left hand screen, I got Builder Trend on my right hand screen, I've got some QuickBooks stuff we're gonna do as well. I've got an estimate here, and a relatively recent change that Builder Trend made was that your budget will not appear until you lock your estimate. Okay, at least the job costing budget. And as of this recording, you still have this legacy budget, but very, very soon that's gonna go away. You won't have a budget until your estimate is locked okay and that's when we kind of have a sign off from our customer that this is the the budget that we're going to build with okay so we're going to potentially do that whole proposal process and get sign off and, and all of that but i'm going to send to budget and that's going to lock the estimate and move it to the budget so it's going to tell me what my price is what the cost is the profit and the margin on this sample job i'm going to go ahead and send to budget and that will then lock, my, and it sends me right to the budget, which is great. So this job costing budget here that's on my right-hand screen will now update. All right, we're gonna dive into this in a second, but let's go back to the estimate. What does it mean when your estimate is locked? Well, it means that I can't make changes to it. I can still, of course, revise my budget, but we don't do it from the estimate anymore. We say that that's done. Now, if and when we wanna revise our budget, we can do it in three ways. One is we spend against allowances. Two is we issue and accept change orders, and three is we update our projected costs. Now here I have my job costing budget over here. Currently, this job is set up as cost plus or open book, okay? So it's an open book job. And so we get a little bit of an interesting setup up here. Basically what's gonna happen is we're gonna track the revised client price based on the actual costs, right? We're doing an open book contract. Within this, we have set our various markups, okay? Those markups are going to feed into here and you're gonna say, well, okay, this was my estimate, this was my budget, based on the spending that we've seen so far and which items are complete, here's our projection on those costs. We add to it our markup that gives us our price, okay? So the job costing budget from an open book project is very technically sound. They're doing a lot of work for us here in Builder Trends, so it's really exciting. And, and from a fixed price, it's also super useful. Uh, it's just like some of this, this functionality is just really, really amazing from a um, open book standpoint. So we see here within my job costing budget, we got a lot of stuff going on. You saw me kind of collapse it down there. And this is why we need to have our cost code set up, our cost codes with our categories. This kind of sets up where the project stands, original budget costs, Revised budget costs, I'm gonna dive into that. Pending costs, committed costs, okay? Actual costs, builder variance, complete, projected, cost to complete, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And it gives you all those different columns, all of which are really, really important for our project here. And at the end of the day, it's gonna give us our revised client price, okay? And we'd wanna be um, communicating that with our customers. So what we're gonna dive into today is what impacts these numbers, right? Uh, what impacts all these different columns and how do we uh, use other aspects of Builder Trend and spend actual money and see how it influences all of this. So the first thing we're going to dive into is the original budget cost versus the revised budget cost. I mentioned that there's a few different ways that we can adjust our budget. And one way that we cannot do it is we cannot go back to the estimate. What Builder Trend is doing a really good job at here is saying this original budget cost will never change ever. Okay. And it shouldn't. We should have a record at all times. Here's what we assigned this project to cost at the very beginning. And that's what we originally decided it would cost. And then by the way, if we scroll over, we had our original client price as well. Those two items will never change. We have that record, we have that baseline. 
they give us this revised budget cost because we know that there are certain instances where we all agree that we should adjust the budget. And what are those? Those are very clearly two specific areas. One is selections and one is change orders, okay? So if we have approved selections or change orders that may or may not adjust our budget here. It doesn't have to, but it certainly can. That's the difference between the original budget cost and the revised budget cost. The revised budget cost takes over and takes precedent over the original. Basically, all of these different calculations here are now based off of the revised. So let's see how we can impact and influence the revised budget cost. So if we go into something like tile, okay? We got ceramic tile and trim, and it looks like um, I've got a change order already issued here that we can look into. So I kind of jumped the gun a little bit, but let's go over to change orders. I'm going to reset this for a second. But if we have change orders, okay, so, um, and this is on my left-hand side of my screen. I'm just gonna recall that change order real quick, say it's not approved. If I refresh my screen over here, I'm going to see um, that we still have, let's go to that tile one, tile spot on. So the original and the revised is equal. But within this change order over here, I've got some tile stuff going on that if and when approved, we would see the original budget cost increase for this specific cost code by in this case $4,500 okay so what we can do is approve that so we're approving that change order and when we approve that change order, whether we do it it's a client meeting we kind of do it manually like I'm demonstrating here or the customer actually does it through their workflow okay that's up to you on how that process works but once we have an approved change order any of those cost codes that were included are now going to show up. We previously had a $0 budget for tile subcontractor. Now we've got a $4,500 budget. Totally for tile went from $20,500 to $25,000. Okay, that revised budget cost is now what we're going off of. Okay, now our projected cost, because we don't know anything else, is $25,000. Cost to complete, $25,000. Currently there's a revised versus projected difference of $0, okay? This column right here becomes really, really useful in illustrating to your customer how we're doing against our budget and how we're doing against our revised budget. Think of the revised budget always as you and your customer, potentially with a designer as well, deciding that it's okay to adjust your budget either up or down, again, with change orders or with selections, okay? So that's change orders right there. Let's do a selection. So we'll stick on tile here. I've got an allowance for some tile of $1,200, okay? So let's just look into how that works. I'm gonna go over to my selections. Okay, we've established part of the budget. I've got all these different, or I've got this $1,200 budget for some tile, okay? If I make a selection on some of it, so I've got this $6,700 thing here. If I confirm that, and let's um, confirm this one too, Okay, so we just confirmed a selection, $6,500. Now that's against a allowance of, of um, that's a price, of a price of 1620. Okay, let me just dive into this for a second so you can see here. Here's my allowance cost, here's my allowance price. Okay, so we see that. And now we've just approved a price, we've just approved a cost of 5,000, a price of 6750. So how does that impact my budget? We've done a change order, we know how that does it. Let's look at what happens with the selection. Scrolling down to our tile material, hasn't updated yet. I'm gonna show you why in a second. Doesn't show anything yet. And the reason for that is because not all of my selections are completed yet, okay? I've got my wall tile figured out and selected, but because this grout is still pending, I don't have a price on it yet, it doesn't necessarily impact my budget yet, but once I were to approve this or decline it, let's say that it's zero dollar, like grout's kind of included, so it's zero dollars. If I confirm that approval, that will now make this allowance totally complete, okay? And we should see this now show up in the budget, okay? So once we've kind of made all of our selections against a certain allowance, we would expect to see the marginal difference show up and we see just that. So the tile material jumps up to 15,700. Again, this revised budget means we, with the customer's input, have decided to change the budget. So we're still tracking a revised versus projected of $0. No difference whatsoever. So those are the two ways that we can impact the revised budget costs, the selections or the allowances. There's one other way that we can play around with the revised price, and that's in our projected costs. We're gonna dive into that. That's what's so special about this job costing budget. But uh, to do that, let's talk about some actual costs. So what we wanna do 
is within our budget, we wanna track what we're actually spending, okay? And that's gonna happen in this area right here. And Builder Trend's doing a really good job of giving us our pending costs, our committed costs, and our actual costs. So what are these? Pending costs are purchase orders that we have released but have not been approved. So we think we're going to incur those costs, but we don't have sign off yet. Committed costs is any of those approved purchase orders that we haven't spent on, no bills or anything yet. Um, also any unapproved time clock shifts. And our actual cost says, okay, give me the actual bills, the actual approved time clock, and we bring in QuickBooks bills and expenses as well. Okay, so we're gonna bring it all together with actual costs. So you can see we have some actual costs starting to build up here. So what I wanna do is show you how this all works. So what we have is this complete column becomes very, very useful as well. So we look at this rough plumbing right now. I've got a budget of 99.60, okay? Where did that come from? I had an original estimate of 9,000 and then that, that change order that we had added $960 cost to that. I've got a purchase order for 8,500. Okay, and then I've got a bill against it for 8,500. Okay, so what we can think about here is, well, are we done spending here? We've, we, you know, that 8,500 is it. What's cool is that QuickBooks is gonna show our projected cost. It, as far as it knows, all the information it has, we've spent 8,500, but our budget's 99.60. It thinks we've got 1,460 left to spend. However, if I were to say, you know what, we're done with this. Uh, rough plumbing is 100% complete, and therefore I have nothing left to spend. If I click this complete, what the system's going to do is say, well, okay, if you're complete, the cost to complete must be zero. You spent 8,500. That means our revised versus projected is a positive 1,460, okay? And that's going to then influence our client price. If I unmark it, 503, if I mark it, look at the price again, goes down to 501. So this gives us a really dynamic way to go through the project, use our brains to tell the system kind of what's going on and regularly update the, the budget, okay? If we didn't do this, we'd have to wait until like the end and we'd have to do a bunch of adjusting, all right? So let's now do it on kind of the other end of the spectrum, which would be where we go over budget. So rough electrical, right now I've got a committed cost of $5,000. Let's throw in some actual costs there and that we can actually do that with um, QuickBooks as well. So I've got the same project up here on QuickBooks Okay, and uh, rough electrical, I've got a committed cost of 5,000. That means I have a, an approved change order. Okay, so I'm gonna pop that open and let's just bill off of that just so we can see how it goes from committed cost to uh, actual. So here's my purchaser, I've got no bills yet. If I bill remaining of this. Okay, rough electrical, yep. If I bill remaining, I'll save and close once I uh, create this, I got some custom fields down below. Once I create that bill, we're gonna see this committed cost now duplicate over to actual costs for electrical, okay? There's that 5,000. And again, uh, QuickBooks, or I'm sorry, Builder Trend sees that we've got a revised budget cost of 12,125. We spent 5,000. As much information as it has says that we've got 7,125 left to spend. If I were to mark this complete, it's going to say that we're done and we've saved that much money. We could do that, okay? Let's now overspend, all right? So what I'm gonna do is add within QuickBooks an expense. Let's say that we spent rough electrical subcontractor in QuickBooks. I wouldn't really advise doing that. I like to put all of my subcontractor expenses in as bills, but I'm gonna create an, a QuickBooks expense just to show you how this works. Rough electric, now remember that we've mapped our cost codes to uh, between Builder Trend and QuickBooks, right? Let's say I spent $8,000 here, and then this is to the, the correct project, 365 Central Park. Let me just save that right there. And, and Builder Trend's gotten really good with our QuickBooks sync. I can refresh it. I can also click sync QuickBook costs right there, and we should see a pretty quick boom right there. Actual cost, we've got the 8,000 QuickBooks cost plus the 5,000. Notice how now we go over budget here. So how is Builder Trend how is Builder Trend calculating this projected cost, okay? And what's awesome is they're showing us how we do this here, $13,000. If I click on this, it's going to show me exactly what's happening. So I've got 5,000, additional actual cost is 8,000, all right? That gives me a total projected cost of 13,000, saying like, yeah, your budget was 12,175, whatever that was, right? 
that was your budget, but you've already spent more. So, you know, logically, our projected cost is 13000 Now, QuickBooks, I'm sorry, Builder Trend doesn't really know much more than that. I've gone over budget already, but what if I think I'm going to go even more further over budget? We have the ability to adjust it further. And this is not saying we have a change order. This is not saying we have a selection, but this is saying that we might have misestimated a little bit or we've got this little tiny thing that's going to add $400. It's really maybe not worth a change order, but we still want to uh, track it. So we can say, you know, I might, if I'm done spending, you know, great. But what if I'm not? How do I track that? So if there was like another $400 I had left to spend, how would I get this to show here? We can click into this and they give us this adjustment function. So I can click this adjustment function and just say, hey, I think that costs are going to go up 400 bucks here. And it's just going to be like um, uh, the uh, fancy switches or whatever that, that it needs to be. Okay, if I save this right here, it's going to assume my projected costs go, goes up and it highlights it in yellow to show that I've made some edits to it. All right, super, super functional, right? Let's dig in just a little bit further on a few other examples. Let me take the ceramic tile. Okay, so we've got this big $28,000 here. Um, we can do the same thing with a big spend. So why don't I do a save and new. New transaction here, we're gonna do tile material. I'm gonna say that I spent, uh, let's say, um, say that we spent, in this case, uh, for tile material itself, let's say it's in 16,500, 365, save that transaction. So 16,500 should now show up as an actual cost. Now we can do something else with this here. There's my, word. Oh, that refresh didn't work. Let me sync QuickBooks cost. This little button has been awesome. It kind of forces the push there. So here we have, I've spent 16,005 on tile material. That's a difference of $800, okay? Now totally, I haven't done anything with my tile labor or tile material um, subcontractor yet. So it does it at the lowest possible level. Now I can do something else with this projected cost. If I say I'm done here, well, great. I'm only $800 over. But one thing we can do is we can say projected cost. Hey, maybe I have a refund coming. So I can click into my projected cost and say, yes, I've spent 16,005, but I've got a refund of, uh, negative uh, 700 coming. So we can do negatives as well, refund pending. Okay, so if we see something looking pretty bad, but we know it's gonna come back, we can help tell that story to our customer and say, hey, hey, don't worry about it. We're 100 bucks over, not 800 bucks over. All right, um, and that's what we're gonna do. What your job here is to like try to keep this stuff green. That's really what we're after. And I would say that as an operator, the, you know, the more red we have, the question we should be asking ourselves is like, should we have captured that in, <clears throat> in a change order? Should we have captured that in the selection? We're doing an open book project. And so in theory, we can kind of spend as much as we need to, and then the customer is going to be uh, responsible for it. But, but we all know that that communication can be really tough. Why was your estimate so bad? You know, that's the question they're going to ask. So whenever you can, your job would be to get this revised price, the revised cost, to reflect any changes we have, okay? If it truly is just the estimate was off, then it should be tracked, revised versus projected. But if scope changed a little bit, we added some lights, we changed the tile pattern, we added more plumbing fixtures, we could just wait and capture it on the actuals, but then we're gonna have a ton of red showing here. Our, a better practice would be to capture it as a change order, no matter how small it is, so that our revised versus projected shows more green than red, and in theory, it should actually kind of be neither color. We should kind of be right on. But it's going to be a little bit different, of course. I would suggest that is a goal of yours, operationally, to capture more change orders and selections such that your advisor versus projected shows up green. All right, so this is our new job costing budget. I demonstrated it from the perspective of an open book project, okay? If we did a fixed price project, it works pretty much the same. It's just the price doesn't update because it's fixed, right? But our budgets still do. It's more for us internally as opposed to externally. Okay, so we're gonna do follow-ups on this and dive in. They're making changes to this all the time. One thing I'm hoping they add soon is we have our actual costs here. Right now, unpaid bills and paid bills show up the same, okay? Even if I haven't paid this yet, it's gonna show up here. To me, from a cash flow management perspective, that's a bit of an issue that I hope and I think they're working on, giving us a paid cost versus unpaid would be helpful, but they're making tremendous strides here. And, and I, as a builder who uses open book pricing, love this. It's really, really great. I don't have to use Excel for this anymore. It's doing a lot of the hard math right here and they're making improvements every single day. I'd love to hear your comments on it. 
and what's working, what's not, what questions you have as well. I can probably answer them right here or with a follow-up video. I'd love to hear what you have to say. Until next time, leave all your comments here. Check out all the free resources we have available online. Check out the course that we have, Builder Books Academy, and look forward to our end-to-end -end Builder Trend course coming in Q4 2025. I'll see you in the next video.